And so women are much unhappier if you look at national polls than they were, say, in the late 1950s and early 1960s. And I think that's partly because freedom and happiness, those are not the same thing. They're not even close. And you know, I see young women all the time struggling to figure out what to do with their lives because they have no idea how to have a job slash career and a family. So, and there's no answer to that. It's a really difficult problem. You know, and there's all sorts of ideas, like I did a lot of consulting for law firms for a long time, about a decade, and I had a lot of clients who were extremely high-functioning female lawyers, younger ones, trying to figure out how to balance their career with their desire to have a life. And, you know, you hear all the time about women being denied access to positions of power, and that that's, a, that's the consequence of prejudice and oppression. It's like... Yeah, yeah, everything is caused by the same thing first. Right, you, you have got one causal principle, wonderful, now you're a philosopher. You can figure out everything with it. It's like, the law firms cannot keep their women in their 30s. They cannot keep them, the big law firms. They all leave, why? Because the women hit 30, they're brilliant, conscientious, intelligent, they were deadly in high school, deadly in university, they nailed law school, they whipped through their articling, they, they made partner by the time they were 30, it was like they were in a rocket to the top position. What do they find when they get there? 80 hour work weeks, right? Because that's one of the things you want to think about. You know, you think that the people who run things are sitting at home smoking big cigars and like telling their minions what to do. It's like that is not, that's like the 1920s millionaire that's on the cover of the Monopoly game. That's no sociological analysis. I know lots of people like that and they work all the time, all the time, from the second they wake up to the second they go to sleep. And they don't just casually work. You know, because I know some of you go to the library for six hours and you say, well, I studied in the library for six hours. Like, no, you didn't. You studied for half an hour. <laughs> you had coffee and you looked through Facebook and, you know, you went home and you said, well, I studied for six hours and you're happy about it. But you know bloody well you didn't. Partly because you can't. You know, I can only read for about three and a half hours till I'm done. And I'm pretty good at it. So these people who are running things, there's corrupt people, obviously, but... The vast majority of them first are self-made and second, they're so bloody efficient and smart, you cannot believe it. And they work 80 hours a week. And most of them happen to be men. And why is that? Because there are a small number of insane men who will do nothing but work 80 hours a week. And no matter where you put them, if you put them in the middle of a forest with an axe, all they would do is run around <coughs> chopping down trees. So the issue isn't why aren't there more women in positions of power? It's why are there any men insane enough ever to occupy those positions? You know, because we also know, and the data on this is very clear, what's the relationship between money and well-being? Once you have enough money to keep the bill collectors from your door, so once you have enough money to stave off misery, which is sort of lower middle class, something like that in our society, maybe a little, little lower than that, Extra money does not help you. It does not improve your life. So why bother with it? Well, that's what the women in the law firms think. It's like most of them, by the time they're in their 30s, are married. Almost all of them are married to men who make as much money or more than they do because that's what women go for cross-culturally. Four to five years older, equal or higher in the socioeconomic status. So their, their husbands already make $350,000 a year. It's like they think, well, I don't need much more money. The men use money to keep track of the competition, by the way, because all the male lawyers that I talk to are usually real hard-ass guys, really low in agreeableness, really high in conscientiousness, like conservative types, low in openness as well. And they want to win. And the reason they care about their damn bonus at the end of the year isn't even so much because of the money, it's because they got a much bigger bonus than the other son of a bitch sitting beside them, and they're happy about that. So there's a real like a real brass knuckles competition that, that drives these sorts of things. But we get things backwards so often in, in, in psychology and in sociology. It's like not why there aren't more women in positions of power. It's why do any men want those positions? You just have no idea the amount of responsibility that comes along with that. You just imagine for a minute trying to run a billion dollar corporation. You can't even bloody well balance your checkbook and there's dust bunnies underneath your bed. How in the world would you ever run a billion dollar corporation? Those things are complicated. And you have enemies and they're trying to take you out all the time. 
You look at Apple and Samsung, man, they're just torturing each other in the courts nonstop. You know, you'll if you're if you're running a big corporation, you'll be you'll be handling two or three hundred lawsuits at a time. And that's just that's just nothing compared to the complexity of what you actually have to do. Stay on top of the technology. Uh, constantly interact with your large customers, travel all the time because it, you have to maintain the relationships, uh, you have to regulate the politics inside the business, you have, believe me, it's no picnic. And you think, well, they get a lot of money. It's like, what makes you think that's such a good thing? You know, like if you're half crazy and you have a lot of money, you're going to be crazy a lot faster, I can tell you that, <laughs> because, because it frees you from all sorts of constraints. You know, we know the data on lottery winners. They're no happier a year later, and some of them are done, especially if they had, had like a bit of a cocaine problem to begin with, because, you know, being broke stops you from dying if you're a cocaine addict. You get enough money, and away you go. And you think to yourself, you know, you've got all sorts of bad habits and weirdnesses. If somebody dumped an infinite amount of money on you, what makes you think you wouldn't unravel completely? It's highly probable. So, anyway, so back to these women. You know, what they do when they're 30 is they look around and they've, they've hit partners, so they've hit the pinnacle of their profession. They think, what the hell am I doing this for? Why would anyone in their right mind want to be woken up at 3 in the morning Sunday by their irate Japanese client who wants them to work for the next five hours non-stop to fix this damn problem, which is going to cost them $100 million right now? Or we'll find someone else to pay $750 an hour to to fix it right now. And you think, well, that's you know a masculine form of value, that, because that's one of the criticisms. If the law firms just adopted a more feminine structure of value, it's like, what kind of bullshit is that? The reason, the reason that you get up at 3 in the morning on Sunday to, to talk to your Japanese client who's freaking out about their contract is because if you don't jump the hell up and do it right now, there's some starving associate who's unbelievably ambitious in New York who will pick up the pieces in two-tenths of a second, and they're smart and aggressive, and they'll take you out. So it has nothing to do with masculine structures of value. It's all the foolish ideas. And, you know, it's not just law where this happens. You know, we know, for example, that female doctors work far fewer hours, too. So the more female doctors you have, the more doctors you have to have. And I'm not complaining about women's priorities. I'm not saying the women are wrong. Not at all. It's like the older I get, the more I understand that marriage and family are of primary importance. And the more I see women in particular, you know, they hit 35 or 40 and they're not married and they don't have kids and they are not happy. Because what the hell are you going to do from the time you're 40 till the time you're 80? You got no family? You got no relationships? What are you going to do? Go run your company. Yeah, well, if you're one in a thousand, that'll satisfy you. So you bloody well better make sure you're that one in a thousand, and you're probably not, because those people are rare. 